be terrific. Official coverage of CES 2017. And welcome back to Be Terrific's continuing live coverage of CES 2017. I am Jason Aaron, and we are in the DJI booth. Welcome. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here with DJI and Kevin. Welcome. I, I mean, I'm so impressed by what DJI does all the time. I'm not just a host to Be Terrific. I'm also a fan. Uh, I've had these products, the Phantom 2, Phantom 3, uh, the Inspire. I have an M600, which is sitting back there and probably impressing people. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in. This isn't, this isn't just TV, folks. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm for real. I sent Andrea back upstairs so she can get a rest because I had to do this interview here at the DJI booth at CES 2017. So we have a bunch of new products on the table behind us, and uh, one of them... We gave you a preview of the other night at CES Unveiled, and that was the DJI Mavic, but we're going to run through that again. Talk to us a little bit. I mean, for those who know the Phantom, if you can't get a scale of, of how big these things are, this is the typical Phantom size that you have seen throughout the years. This is the Mavic. I mean, I could fit like four of these in the same, uh, you know, sort of packing space of a fan, eh, give or take. I'm exact hyperbole a little bit. But talk to us about the Mavic. I mean, what does this thing do? Well, basically, this will let anybody and everyone who wants to learn how to fly just take it anywhere. So this is why we've created this product. It's foldable. It's compact. But we still did not um, sacrifice any of the key technologies like obstacle avoidance, tracking. It's all back in there. Uh, basically, you take this in one pocket, this in the other, off you go. So whether you're in a car or whether you're traveling somewhere else, you know, if something you see, you want to capture that moment or tell a story to your friends live, you know, live stream it, share it, this is what it does. So, I mean, all right, so right now, let's say I just put this in my bag and I'm ready to go. How do I get this up and flying? How long does it take? I would think maybe about less than a minute. Well, this one is uh, the battery. I don't think it's there, but what do you do as you double press? Oh, yes, we do have some battery. Okay. So unfolds now what you do is you also need to connect this with your smartphone you could do it just flying with this or with your smartphone together or just your smartphone using Wi-Fi so let's say I plug out my smartphone I load the DJI Go app turn this on connect off it goes now what is the connection between the remote and the uh, and the drone it's called uh, OcuSync so this is a de uh, technology that we've developed so that uh, it reduces uh, the interference because Wi-Fi and other things may, may cause interference, especially if you're in a busy area like this. So we built our own um, light bridge technology for the Phantom, but this is, uses uh, OcuSync. So about how far could I, aside for local legal laws, uh, whatever those are, how f far can I fly this away from where I'm standing? Well, uh, five kilometers, um, but technically, you know, you always fly within line of sight. Here in the U.S., line of sight. Make sure to follow those local drone rules. Get your, uh, take your exams. Don't fly illegally. He's just right beside us. So, <laughs> yes, they are. There's the FAA right over there. He wasn't joking. The rules, right? Um, now we had, we did have a question internally about flying with the plastic cover on here. Uh, what's sort of the the thought from from you guys? Well, most of the times we do take it off so that this allows it to sprint freely, right? Um, so you know, it should be off. And that doesn't affect if there's more wind or anything like that? Doesn't affect the gimbal in any way? No, I think um, similar with all our three-axis gimbals. I mean, they were uh, tested uh, numerous times. Um, and, you know, we have about 10 years of flight technology. So even in very windy conditions, you know, this still is very stable. If you can look very indoor, the pilot has a controller off, you know, it's very safe. And as you can see, there is a cage behind us. They're flying uh, a Phantom 4 and a Mavic right behind us. So get down here if you're at CES and see this. The next thing we're looking at here, you people have probably been seeing this during the interview and wondering what you're looking at. It is a red Phantom with an interesting design on it. Uh, talk to us about what this is uh, right here that we're looking at. Well, this is the Phantom 4 Chinese New Year edition. It's a limited edition product. So we've uh, worked with a um, designer, an illustrator, to actually come up with a design. So the centerpiece of this um, Phantom 4, Chinese New Year edition, is um, based on the, the phoenix, which is a chi in Chinese mythology, a bird that brings good fortune, happiness to everybody. Um, 
And, and so he, he did the design uh, and, and we've now commissioned it. It's now ready to go. We're shipping in the next two weeks uh, around the world. So, but it is limited in quality. It's available on our DJI uh, uh, store as well as an Apple store. So how much more is this going to cost me than a regular Phantom 4? Well, 200 US dollars more. That's not bad for $200. You get a work of art. So this really, uh, and here's the remote, as you can see as well. This really mixes technology and art in, in a really cool way. Right. I mean, um, if you're looking at, you know, maybe five, six years ago, you know, it was really for the enthusiasts. But now everybody wants to actually give this technology a try. So we want to merge different elements, lifestyle, arts, you know, all together so that we could actually talk to more and engage more people. That's amazing. All right. So we got two down and then we got the big fella in the back. Uh, for those, the Inspire's been out for a couple years now. Uh, there was a white edition, there was a black edition, and now we see this gorgeous steel titanium color. This behind us is the Inspire 2. Talk to us about how the product has evolved. Well, I think if you look at the Inspire 1, um, that product was about two years ago, um, end, uh, end of 2014. So we took, you know, some time. We, we, we learned from our customers. We learned about filmmaking, uh, talking to professionals. And with this product, um, you know, we've tried to address a lot of the pain points that they have. Uh, one of them being, you know, usually when you're flying in a, in a team of people, there's an operator and a camera person. And oftentimes, the operator may not help the operator to look at, be looking at the camera because that, it, it could be looking at this way or this way. But it needs to have that, that view of where the drone is flying. So we've added an FPV camera for the operator so that it sees exactly where it's going, no matter where the camera is being rotated. So that's um, one additional feature that we've added. Obviously now we've added the obstacle avoidance in the front. We've also added the infrared sensor at the top. For those who are going into narrow spaces or filming in you know, uh, 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 narrow areas, so that helps uh, to warn them, right? Uh, another beauty is that we've actually now put in two batteries, two intelligent batteries. One to extend the flight time, number two to allow for the hot swap so that you don't need to power on, power off your machine. So it saves a lot of time. Uh, I think these are the, you know, some of the key things, but more importantly, there's a built-in um, solid state drive, which means that when uh, they do post-production, all you do is take out the car, plug it into your computer, saves a lot of time. Now, is that the only way that it uh, records onto the internal solid state drives? Well, uh, that's probably the best way and fastest way. I mean, um, if you look at the professionals, the post-editing process, a lot of time is, is the waiting time. So we understand that pain point and want to actually minimize that, make it easier for them, not just for flying, but post-production as well. And talk to us about the new camera system. On the Inspire 1, you had the X3. You eventually came out with the X5 and the X5R. Uh, and now that's totally been redone as well. Right. The reason why we've actually had to redo the camera is we've packed the um, processing core inside the airframe as well as um, the sensor. So the lens sits here. So basically, this is, uh, this is the X4 S, and uh, we have the X5S over there. Um, so if you're looking at the, uh, the X5S, we're looking at 20 megapixels, uh, 5.2K videos. So we've stepped up uh, with our existing cameras. Uh, this is a X4S, which is similar to the Phantom 4 Pro. So for those who probably are in the professional filmmaking industry that need that extra, uh, you know, the resolution, um, you know, that, that the X5S is probably the, the, their option. And one of the things that I notice again, you may not get it on camera, but the motors here look like they're about double the size of the original Inspire motors. Uh, probably not double, I would think, um, but you know we've made some uh, fine adjustments. I mean, you looked at the airframe; people would think eh, it's pretty much the same, but we've done a lot of finer details in this. And um, you know, going back, sorry, to this, this the reason why we package the you know the sensors up in the airframe is that in case you know sometimes you you may have some uh, accidents with your lens. You know, for for the end user, it's easier and less. A cost, um, it's less costly. Saves you money. Right, right. So a lot of those things, you know, we over two years we've learned. Uh, we've talked to a lot of people, professionals, and come with something that's totally new and 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 uh, changing the industry. And we've heard some great feedback. So we have about a minute left, Kevin. The last thing I want to talk about. Everyone's probably been wondering what iPad this is. Uh, it is not an iPad. Right. This is a brand new monitor. You know, it's great that you can integrate your cell phone with all the DJI products. Uh, it's very convenient technology, but sometimes, you know, having a standalone monitor for your drone is not a bad idea. What are we looking at? So if, um, if you look at the outdoor operators, whether you're doing shooting a film, whether you're doing surveying, construction, sometimes the light does get into the way of your tablets. Um, and even if you dial it up to the brightest, res uh, the, the brightest nit, that is still not good enough. So we've developed something that's um, catered to outdoor use. So this is a built-in um, 
it's still a prototype. It's called Crystal Sky, uh, and it's dedicated. Uh, it's an ultra bright um, uh, monitor, dedicated for outdoor shooting. So the DJI Go app is built into this uh, HDMI SD card. So basically, you're working with a total solution here for outdoor. Uh, operators. Now, can I take this monitor off and use it for other applications? Uh, you could take this off and use it for other drones. Um, as I said, you know, we're still in the proto prototype phase. So, what's going to happen to the end product, specs, and all that? Stay tuned. All right. Well, there you have it from DJI. We saw the Mavic, the Inspire 2, and the Phantom. But they have many more products: uh, the Ronin, the Osmo. Of course, you can always find them at DJI.com. Kevin, thank you so thank you. much. And we'll be back with plenty more. We're going to head back upstairs to Michael and Andrea on set right above Central Hall. It's CES 2017. Be terrific. Official coverage of CES 2017.